No, I wouldn't say it's the starlings. Uh, um, they do compete for the houses and all that. But starlings are here. There's nothing we can do about it. The big problem with bluebirds was uh, oh, back about 20 years ago when uh, so many of them died by being smothered in these tobacco sheds. There's a little chimney on top of the tobacco shed. Now, if you're in Tennessee or Kentucky, and it was warm, and that's uh, it was securing. The starlings, I mean, the uh, bluebirds would cram in there sometimes a dozen or more. They'd suffocate to death. And they estimate that between five and six million bluebirds die because of those tobacco sheds. And it may have been the, you know, the determining thing. Now, it's true they compete with starlings, but so do, so do uh, tree swallows. In fact, they're even more aggressive than tree swallows native, so we say that's all right. Remember, we're all aliens, too. <laughs> In fact, in fact, the Indians were when they first came. So the, uh, things extend their ranges. Uh, of course, the starling was uh, liberated here deliberately back in New York City some years ago and has spread across the country. It's all the way to Alaska now. Hell Sparrow didn't even quite make Alaska, which is interesting. And uh, uh, starling's all the way down to uh, Mexico now nothing we can do about it. So what can we do to help the Just bluebird? put up lots more bluebird houses so that they okay. got a choice. If they get crowded out of one, they'll pick another. Bluebirds are rather docile birds. They're not aggressive. And therefore they can't quite put up a fight with a tree swallow or a starling. I would just put up more houses. And another thing is to talk to the county is going back to woods See, when it was more of a, an agricultural county with a lot of old orchards and that, that's the proper place for bluebirds. And you've got, in fact, this should be rather good. Uh, I don't suppose there are bluebirds here, are there? Right here? Not right here. But uh, you see any reason there shouldn't be? No, because they're on the hills surrounding us. Yeah. Uphill, just over across the expressway. Uh, now, you should put up some bluebird boxes here, are there? There haven't been any yet. Now put up some boxes. I think you. Yeah, there are just up on the hill at the airport. Yeah. There's a lot. Yeah. yeah. So the um, bluebirds are, are doing well in, in Stalker County now. They're coming back. The crows are such a scavenger, and they're so opportunistic. Are they? Do they steal baby birds or or Once eggs? Once in a while, but uh, this is why birds uh, raise two roses because it takes care of the predation, you might say. Now, after all, everything eats something else. Wheat. Something else. And uh, I, uh, I don't worry about crows one bit. In fact, we've got a pair of crows right outside my studio, and they, but they uh, are very quiet about it. We even have a pair in, around all the supermarkets in town. Mm -hmm. They li have learned to live with us, and there's nothing more difficult than a human animal to live with. So I rather admire crows that they, they don't, uh, they're not particularly aggressive. They're very shy. Uh -huh. So uh, enjoy the crows. They're one amongst the brightest birds. Yeah. You have to be bright to live with people. Uh, thank you. I sound, I sound uh, slightly liberated right now, but uh, the older I get, the more I realize that there are other things in the world besides people. We always think in an egocentric way about ourselves. Um, Jim? Have you got some questions? Uh, how, how, is the, uh, how are the uh, clubs doing around the nature center? The uh, after-school clubs? Good. Yeah. We've got the number of them going in uh, several schools in the county. That's wonderful. I, I gather it's um, one of the best jobs being done in the whole state. Is that true? I'd like to think so. Well, this is what I've heard. It's a model for the... And I think... Uh, and. Uh, the RTP Institute uh, certainly should cooperate with you, and I hope they are. They are, very much because, so. Because, uh, uh, in a way, uh, we, we should use you as a model for others to follow. <laughs> We're working together on a number of things. Good. It's working out Has well. it always been that way? Yes. Good. Right. You'll have to come down and see how our uh, progress we're making on our... Because I, I read the uh, bulletins from uh, time to time. It sounds great. Thank you. You should see the new building, how it's progressing. I have a lot of uh, uh, prints that, uh, when you, if you need anything with wall space, not just prints, but uh, blow-ups of some bird photographs. See, at my age, uh, curiously enough, my therapy is uh, 
is bird photography because my ears are no longer what they were. They're not not like Bob Sindel's. I can't hear some of the higher notes. Uh, but it's still better than it should be at my age. But my eyes are my real problem because I've had cataracts removed and so uh, 20 minutes and you could sketch it. Well, uh, so all my old sketchbooks are full of these two birds. And uh, the thing is, you know, birds are so quick and, and uh, usually you think you're trying to write and you get the head turned and, and uh, one shot out of three will turn up. You can study these uh, video shots with some very good equipment now and see what happens and then do your studies. I do have a question for you. Did you ever get to get any pictures of the polar bear up at Churchill? I did from a, yes, I, I got that, good. but only from the deck of the ship. Better than nothing. <laughs> well, uh, you can go up to the Rotten Zoo and get them too. But it's not the same. It's not quite the same. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I've uh, noticed all these very fine polar bear paintings that were being published around the country because it's a PR animal, you might call it. Yeah. And they're always obviously taken under zoo conditions. You can easily tell. And I've only known one artist who did good polar bears that he done from life. Now, uh, you, we all can see polar bears now. We go with Dan Gorovitz or someone up, up in the James Bay. They had these polar bear tours. But uh, one friend of mine was a little bit incautious because he was a birder. And there were some ivory gulls out there. And he leaned out, way out there, to get the shouting ivory gulls and the polar bear practically ripped his arm off. And uh, I learned his lesson that way. Polar bears, you don't fool with polar bears because they eat you. Very dangerous. Other bears uh, are not especially dangerous, even grizzlies. You just face a grizzly and tell them to go home as well. You don't run. So. You guarantee that? Well, uh, most of the time. Because I'm going to be in grizzly country in two weeks. Well, don't <laughs> run from them. No. Just be bigger. Be Put your hands up this way. <laughs> I'd just like to tell you people that Roger's going to speak at 10 o'clock, almost that now, and uh, he's got to have a cup of coffee before then. Yes. So maybe... And, uh, any, but any more questions? Yeah. I, well, I'm just going to give a general talk that some of you may have heard before, so please bear with me because uh, most of you forget it anyway, and so I can use it. <laughs> By the time I've told, there's a goldfinch flying. See that wonderful mm -hmm. zipping flight? Yeah. Yes. How many of your first field guides with the errors were before the errors were found? Are you talking about the uh, your West, uh, 1934 field guides? Oh, the first one. Was a matter of error? Are you the errors? Well, in the birds, the shaking in the birds next. Oh, that, also that, the index mistake. that. That's a matter of, of engraving. Yes, I can always tell the first printing of the first edition, which was 2,000 copies. And um, because the on the whistling swan plates, the glaze weren't cleaned out of the neck. Well, was the index mistake in the same? Yes. You found at the same time? Yes. Now, what word in the index was it? It was Bob uh, Pumper instead of Bob Pumper. Uh, nickname for the bitter. See, I have two of those books, and I wasn't sure of the index mistake. Yes, and you've got the dust jacket as well. I don't have the dust jacket. Because, you know, if you've got the dust jacket... I heard you're looking for a dust jacket. Is well, I don't have it? one myself, but it came out in $2.75. <laughs> they were all gone overnight. And I got I was to get no royalty on the first thousand. I just didn't mind because no one had any money in those days. Well, now uh, they never print less than 100000 And, uh, in fact, it's up to about 6 million copies, I think. But if you can get one of that first printing with a dust jacket, it's worth $1,500. Without it, it's worth probably 1000 I don't know, but uh, as much as you can get. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the way the world is. It's, uh, <laughs> and uh, I know I've got uh, copies of that first printing, but without the dust jacket, it's pretty shabby. But. Uh, this is the errors, but the 1934 without them. I wouldn't you know. Do you have a price on those? I no. wouldn't know. In an autobiography is. Just an autobiography, um, uh, you're subject to uh, other people's memories. Uh, for example, uh, uh, the Devlin. The Devlin and that. They were man and wife, even though they went by different names. 
he was New York Times, she was Reader's Digest. I can tell which chapters he wrote, they were letter perfect. And hers, she should have been a novelist. I can say this now because she's no longer with us. But the thing is, uh, she would say, Roger probably was thinking this when he did that. And the furthest thing from my thoughts. And so uh, that's not. Uh, and now, when you write a biography of yourself, you choose to forget certain people you'd rather not mention them. So neither is quite the whole thing. And uh, now, if you read about it, if you're a political figure, it's either you're all for or all against it. You don't get a balancing about. I don't know about Kitty Kelly. Uh, that's called Kitty Litter, I'm told. <laughs> <laughs>